Previously, I showed you how to use this Visionist keypad and mini controller. These two conform to the Wigan standard. And today, we're going to take that standard to a whole nother level by integrating it into Home Assistant. It is crazy awesome how something so small can make something a whole lot better for just about like $5. This is the wiring diagram from the last video. Here you can see the reader, the control module. This whole thing is powered by 12 volt DC. To make this whole thing even better, we're going to connect the D1 mini chip to the D1 pin and a D0 pin. On the D1 mini, we're going to use GPIO 5 and 4. So go from 5 down to D0, from GPIO 4, go down to connect it to the D1. By adding this D1 mini chip into the loop, it does not affect the current operation. In fact, it only enhances it. So if you're only curious and want to learn more about the Wigan standard, go ahead and just get yourself a cheap reader for about like 25 bucks and connect that straight into the D1 mini chip. The only reason why I'm connecting this D1 mini chip to my control module is because I want it to do a whole lot more. The D1 mini needs its own power source as well. You can power it up using any 5 volt DC power supply or just use the micro USB cable and plug it in straight into this slot right here to power it up. Myself, because this is already 12 volt DC, I'm just going to use a power shield. The power shield allows me to power this D1 mini via 12 volt DC. Once you're done with wiring up the hardware, go ahead and jump into the ESP Home. I'm not going to go over the top section because that's pretty standard. And you can view this other video of mine that will go into much more detail if you're new to ESP Home code. Let's jump to the middle section. We need the Wigan code right here. We're going to define it. D0 is connected to the GPIO 5 and D1 is connected to the GPIO 4. If you mess up with the wiring or if you get funky codes in your output later on, all you have to do is swap this GPIO code in software as seen here. So instead of a 5, change it to a 4 and instead of a 4, change it to a 5. And that should fix a lot of errors that people are getting. Don't worry about typing this whole mess by yourself. I'm just going to have a link down below for you to just highlight, copy, and paste. Once you're done with Wigan, let's jump to the key collector section. Source ID, you can name it whatever you want. I name mine as front door because that's where it is, at the front door. You can define the minimum length to be anything that you want as well as the maximum length. For myself, I'm using 2 and maximum length of 8. On my keypad, when I'm done entering the string of numbers, it's going to end with a pound. On my physical keypad, there's a star sign, so I can define that as a back keys. So if I type in a number wrong, I can always go back. Mine does not have a clear key, so I can wipe this line out, clear keys. But if your keypad does have something to clear out all the keys, then you can define it right here. The allow keys will be from 0 to 9. Timeout is 5 seconds, and then the whole thing clears up. You can change it to whatever you want. On results, let's keep everything as it is right now. Let's jump to line 58. If the user enter 1, 1, 1, pound, then it's going to turn the switch reader 0, 1 to on. If the user enter 1, 1, 0, then it's going to flip the switch to off for reader 0, 1. Finally, if the user enter 1, 2, 1, then it's going to toggle another reader, reader 0, 2, flipping it on to off or off to on as a toggle. We're going to find reader 0, 1 and 0, 2 as a switch, and the platform will be template. I know this whole mumbo jumbo doesn't make sense right now, but you'll see later on. Once again, here's the switch 0, 1, and here's another switch, reader 0, 2. I defined these two switches for now, but you can define any switches that you want based on my code. Once you're done with YAML, go ahead and install the code onto your D1 chip. Now, let's go to settings, integrations, ESP Home Devices. Go down to Wigan or whatever you name that project. And here you can see the Reader01 and Reader02. Once again, if the user enter 111 pound, then it's going to flip the Reader01 to the on position. If the user enter 110, it's going to flip this to the off position. Once you get these switches up and running in Home Assistant, then you can create automations based on it. For instance, if I'm working in a garden, I'm going to enter in 111 pound. 
This will disable all of the sensors out in the front. The sensors installed in the front are to um, alert me of anybody around the house. That can be very annoying as you can imagine if I'm working in a garden and I'm getting constant alert that somebody is in the garden. Once I'm done working in the garden, then I can always enter in the code 110 pound to reactivate all of the sensors again. Here's another use for the Wigan keypad. Instead of buying it from Ring, create your own keypad using any Wigan keypad. That way you can turn on the alarm, turn off the alarm, open doors, turn off the lights as needed. Very slick. Interestingly enough, if your reader supports FOB functionality or NFC functionality, whenever you scan a FOB or an NFC car, then it's going to assign it that number. It was a very long number and I just rename it to whatever I want. So if yours was scan, it appears as a number, just go on to the settings icon, put in the name, whatever you want, and then click on updates. From there, every time the FOB is scanned, you can create automations based on that. All right, let's briefly go into ESP key attacks. If you haven't seen these two videos, I highly recommend that you check them out. It's very slick. Basically, it's like the D1 Mini, except it's super small and you attach it to any Wigan reader for you to start hacking. Once the ESP key is able to collect all of the code from the FOB or whatever, then the hacker can just replay it for it to open a door. Knowing what you know about the Wigan standard in this video, you can certainly create automations in Home Assistant or other hub to defeat this ESP key attack. For instance, create an automation that says if FOB B was scanned, then disable it from ever working again at this location, at the front door or install another reader. The reader in front of the door is for opening only, and the reader behind the door is for unlocking the door. That means FOB B is only allowed to open a door from the outside. If FOB B was scanned again from the outside, it will not unlock the door. All right, hopefully this video helps you on understanding ESP Home, the D1 Mini chip, and the weekend standard. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.